Hello, Pyle. Hello. Thanks for joining us here. And you're, you're a New Yorker. Well, you're living in New York, right? Yep, you guys I've are been based in New York here. for 10 years. Yeah, so uh, thanks for having me as a guest uh, from Thank Toronto. You. Yeah. Um, so we heard a lot about your success from Jordan. But it wasn't always that way. When you guys started out as Classtivity, things were sort of more bleak, I guess, is how I could put it. But how would you put it? You know, when we started this company, it was all about a mission to help people get connected to their passion. So, um, you know, my quick background, I've been a dancer my entire life. I was looking for a class and it seemed pretty simple to me to say, why isn't this as easy as when I order food on Seamless Web or book a restaurant from Open Table. So the first version of the site, obviously technologically, it seemed pretty simple. Let's build a directory, get all this information into one place. And we launched Classtivity. We spent about a year uh, building that through technology and we launched it right out of Techstars. And you know, there were crickets after that. Um, it was one of those moments where um, you know, a lot of, I think, companies can either get stuck in saying, this is all we're going to do. But you know, I think me and the team were super motivated to say, no, like, there's, there's something else here. And we had so many people backing us. They could see our passion. And they were just like, keep going. And we started working on another idea. And it evolved into ClassPass. But there was actually even another pivot in the middle. So, but it sounds like there's a lot of support there, you're saying, like throughout the process. So but the, at any time, were you just like, I'm, I'm done with this. Like you had tons of things, tons of options that you could have that you could have taken up. Like, at what point? How, how do you get through that? Because me, I would have curled up in a ball and I would have been like, I'm done with this. Whatever. Like I give up. Right. You know, people are everything. I've always surrounded myself by really awesome people. Um, from the beginning, you know, people like David Tisch, Fritz Landman have been so supportive. And even in those moments where we didn't know, they were like, you're going to figure this out. Keep going. And I always had that encouragement around me. And at the end of the day, we were we just knew that there was an answer here and that we could really change the world. And uh, that just kept us going. I don't know. I mean, I wake up every day saying, how do I you know, improve myself, how does the company keep growing? And I think that motto stuck with us. Great, so, but you never had a moment where you just almost gave it up? No, I mean, I think failure is one of the most amazing data points. It tells you which direction to not go. Uh, and it kind of opens the doors into saying, hey, here's all the opportunity that does exist. Great. Um, so about the change, like about becoming, I guess ClassPass is, is a relatively new thing uh, in terms of the name and the brand, like when did you guys switch over? So about a year ago, yeah. um, it was called Classtivity before that. It was Classtivity, then the Classtivity Passport, then Classtivity ClassPass, and oh, then we finally I stuck yeah. with ClassPass <laughs> last February. Um, so like, walk me through that change. Like, how did that come about? How did you recognize the better opportunity? And, and like, whose advice did you take in that process? And, and how much of it was your own thinking and you know, yeah. anything like that? So, you know, at the time, the team was really small. There was four of us. Um, we had launched a product called the Passport in the market. So once Classtivity didn't exist, we said, OK, let's go talk to studio owners, see how we can really make this marketplace take off. Um, what we realized for the studio owners is they wanted people to come in their doors. They were giving away classes for free just to get people to come. Mm -hmm. And we realized we had an amazing technological site built. We had integrated with a lot of the back end technologies already. So we decided to create this product called the Passport, which was a $49 offer. People got to try a variety of classes, but they had to be a new customer, and they could only go once. And we used that platform to say, we're going to do remarketing and targeting for you to get people to come back. We had an internal metric of saying 75% of people who gave something a positive rating should attend back, right? We wanted to make sure we were converting people and not just getting classes for free. Mm -hmm. um, and when we didn't see that number, we started to say, OK, is this going to work long term? Right? It had been three months. We knew that people loved the product. Uh, they loved it so much that they were trying to buy it over and over again when they actually couldn't. So whenever people are trying to give you money over and over again, it's just kind of one of those moments to say, hey, what's going on here? They want to keep giving us money. They were kind of trying to fraud us yeah. and buy it over. So that's well, I've, used, yeah. I've used the different emails with clearly contacts <laughs> or whatever. I've, you have a different thing here. That's a, that's a Canadian reference for Canadians in the audience. Um, but. Uh, yeah, like I, I can see why the temptation would be there. So yeah. you recognize that, and you didn't 
necessarily punish users for that. No, and what we ended up doing is we did some surveys. Um, you know, we we asked people why they weren't going back. A lot of them were like, "Hey, you know, I really loved the variety," and we were like, "Hmm, interesting variety." Most people were that wasn't the model that had existed before, mm -hmm. um, and it took us about two months to go from you know having a one month model to a subscription model. Our first month we had 35 subscribers. The second month we had 70. Um, and now, you know, we've done 4.5 million reservations yeah. uh, to date on the platform. That's a lot of people working out, and most of those reservations are things people have never ha would have even tried before. Mm -hmm. and, and how do you, like, is it just all user-driven in terms of um, making those choices to like try something new, or are you guys guiding them and helping them with that process? Yeah, you know, to date it's been pretty much like a pull experience. We're working on massive recommendation algorithms. We want people, we have so much data. Every single class you've been to, uh, we've collected a rating review. We're collecting what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, mm -hmm. so we can further recommend to you the best class for you, whether it's in your work, locally, you know, to your home. It, you know, there's so many ways that we're going to be expanding on the recommendations. And so do you share that information with your partners, with the, the fitness facilities? Yes, we currently share all the ratings and reviews with them. It's a great way for them to improve their business. Sometimes they don't know, right? They don't know why someone doesn't like their class. It's important for them to know, hey, do you need water? You know, is it just, uh, is it a location problem? Is it a teacher problem? People aren't just getting enough of sweat in your class. All that information is so important for them to continue to improve their business. And so speaking of partners, like that clearly is, is a nice thing that they've probably not had before, but are you getting any sort of resistance? Like it does seem like the model that you're offering is, I, it's, to me, it seems like it's, de it's designed to keep people sticky to your, your service as opposed to converting to, say, full-time members for these facilities. So what's amazing is 80% of our users have purchased directly from our, from our studios. So we actually know that they are being introduced to a new platform, and they're really engaging with our studio owners. Mm -hmm. And you know, we've had 95% retention on our studio partner side over these two years. And then do they remain ClassPass users, or is that a lossy model? Like, are, isn't that a problem, too? Yeah, I mean, they remain both, right? They're they're kind of realizing that ClassPass is a great way for me to keep the variety in, but they also want to, you know, we have a cap on how many times you can go to any one studio in a given month, so a lot of people are like, I want to go my fourth week at the same studio, so they buy directly for them. We don't have all the inventory, right? So some of the premium inventory is restricted. The studios are able to do that. That was something we did early on um, in terms of inventory allocation. It was important for us to make sure that the studio owners were going to have sort of the ability to restrict their inventory and keep it for their loyalists. Now, but does there ever come a point where it is more beneficial for you to sort of aggressively pursue these customers as class pass customers and turn studios into a more, uh, not like a, like a dumb pipe type model, or, or do you think that it's sustainable to, for you both to grow? The market is huge, right? It's a $40 billion industry. We already know we're doubling it, which is amazing. Uh, people want to work out more. The most amazing thing that ClassPass has done is motivated people to get off the couch and get to class. And that's a win-win for everyone, right? The market goes, people are spending money now on the market and stuff that they would have never done before. Oh, good. What about um, the unlimited thing? Is that sustainable? Because we have the, the company actually uh, that was presenting, I think yesterday, the blowout. Yeah. I don't know if you saw, but they were doing like unlimited uh, blowout appointments at hair studios. And some of the judges had commented like, if I had that, like I would just be in there every single day all the time, right? Like t taking advantage of that. Yep. So you have these super users, but it, and I realize there's a balance, right? But is there a danger that the super users eventually outgrow your ability to balance? You know, we're build we want to build the best product that works for obviously all of our partners and our business model. Um, as we've grown, we went unlimited because most people actually go to a very different amount of classes every single month. So there's a lot of variance. We didn't want the person who was going to four classes to feel bad, and we don't want the person who's like, I want more of an appetite to feel like they can't do that, right? So as we've become unlimited, I think what we've seen is we've, you know, the average person goes to around five to six classes in an average month, right? That's sort of the standard thing. That's what's been in the gym industry for so long. We've actually been a little bit higher than that, of course, because it's a more engaging platform. 90% of our users work out versus only, you know, in the gym industry, 60% of people have a gym membership don't go at all. Mm -hmm. So we've definitely seen higher engagement, and it's something that, you know, we're looking at 
in interesting services to add to the platform versus trying to cap the product because that feeling of unlimited is what gives people that idea of, I can be anything on this platform. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we've, as a product, really cared about. So unlimited is, is essentially the key ingredient, you think, to the magic? Because that was that is what yeah. made the difference, I guess, right? When you guys were experimenting with... People want to feel like they can do anything, right? Who who wants to buy something where they feel where they can't feel like, oh, I could work out every day? Yeah. You kind of have that aspiration, right? Of course, that's not always what happens, sadly, but we want to help you get there and we want the model to work as well. Nice. Um, now, we heard Jordan also mentioned some numbers, so let's go through those numbers quickly. So the $60 million revenue run rate is, what, two months old, I think, at this point? So uh, I, you guys didn't confirm or deny at the time. How about right now? Can you confirm? We've been growing at 20% month over month, so we'll let you guys do the math. OK. <laughs> but that, that number might be out of date, then, is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. We're growing really fast. You know, I mean, it's the growth that we're seeing, and it's mostly all viral, has been phenomenal. We've launched seven cities in the past two months. So we're now in three international cities, so super heavy growth. And is the, so the international expansion plan, are you guys, what's involved in actually your expansion, so your city to city? Like how much of that involves hiring, do you hire local when you move to these places? We've actually been managing it all from New York City. Oh really? Yep. Okay, so then what, walk us through an expansion then. Yeah, so we go there, we uh, sign up all the studios. You know, what's amazing is so many people have heard of the brand now, so the studios there are so excited to be working with us. When we launched London, we launched it with 200 studios. Hmm. Um, and we've seen phenomenal growth since then. A lot of it, you know, we, we know how to do our events, we know how to market to our users, we know how to get the right people, the influencers sort of involved with the product earlier on. And then from there, it goes viral. And it's amazing because it's a product that gives back to people, right? They walk into class, the studio owner says, hey, are you here from ClassPass? The person there is saying, hey, I'm here from ClassPass. So it's something that, you know, we know people like to chat about. So you don't you don't have boots on the ground in, in any of these the, the major cities we are. Yeah, we've as a company really efficiency is one of our pillars. Huh. Um, we focus on process. We focus on doing things um, in a really brand centric way, and we wanted to centralize to make sure that we were able to do that. And it sounds like community plays a big part in helping you be able to do that as well. Yeah, I mean we've you know what's amazing is we've you know we've launched amazing events on our site like movies, ice skating. We've gotten people to go to things with complete strangers. So we've built a community. Mm -hmm. ClassPass is a community essentially and people are very excited to meet other class passers and we know there are so many stories of people becoming friends just because they saw each other at class that seems very um, valuable in terms of like expanding beyond so are you are you looking at other areas like outside of, of the current market that you're tackling you know, uh, our company mission statement is to make the world a bit more right-brained mm -hmm. and in that encompasses a lot of things right it's about finding that mind-body connection every single day. People find that in many different ways, whether it's uh, through physical activities or mental activities, meditation, um, you know, doing things like music classes, cooking classes. So we'll be expanding into other areas. You know, wherever the model where there's excess capacity, we know we could be an amazing marketing channel and get people to be excited about going to offline activities again. Mm -hmm. That's where we'll be. So you mentioned a lot there. Those are specifically coming, like that's guaranteed. Coming soon. It's a part of the vision. You know, we'll be rolling them out. Okay, but um, no specific timeline. Yeah, that. coming soon. All right. Um, other numbers: the 200 million valuation, yay or nay? So you know that was earlier this year. We've yeah. doubled since then. Okay, good. That's that's easy math for the math guys over there. Some of my colleagues can do math. I can't. Um, let's actually talk about the acquisition of FitMob too. So what did you pay for FitMob? The terms were favorable to both companies. We're really excited to be on one team. Um, I always believe, you know, making the world a better place should never be a competition. So mm. we're excited to be on the same team towards the same mission. It's important. That, that is a bit of an unusual move for, especially for companies that are, like you've been around for a long time, but uh, class pass as, as it is now is, is fairly young. So it was interesting to see that that aggressive of a move very early on. So can you give us a bit of, of insight behind how that happened? Yeah, you know, our investors uh, started chatting and they, they realized that, you know, we're building a really big business and we should be on the same side. And we've got a lot of amazing talent in both companies and we decided to come together. Great. Um, so just, uh, can you also walk us through the, the revenue model that you guys use? So how, how do you make money uh, in these arrangements and how much money goes to 
the studios and schools that you're working with? So we pay the studios on a per class attended basis. It's a discounted rate because of the amount of volume that we're sending them. Um, we know the usage. Usage, you know, changes every single month, right? In January, people went to a lot of classes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, over the summer, people do more outdoor activities, so the usage number always changes. Yeah. But it's always a combination of the two. Um, we have our subscription. We've paid. At this point, you know, last year we spent $30 million paid back to the studios. We'll send them over $100 million this year. A lot of our revenue goes right back to the studios, and we're building a massive community of a very engaged audience that wants to do more and more things. Nice. And what about actually providing sort of like, um, like are you content being, uh, taking inventory that's available from elsewhere and then, and then offering it? Or do you guys want to get into any of your own things like, like on the actual inventory side as well? You know, we're part of even the FitMob app acquisition is about that. They've focused a lot on community-based classes. Um, we think there is definitely an opportunity there, but it's always important to remember there are thousands of classes happening every single day where they're not full. Yeah. So it's important to really focus on fixing that as well as obviously adding new stuff. But there's obviously, you know, excess inventory in the market today. Great. Um, so just uh, to finish up, actually, do you have any, like, very concrete product plans that you can share? Is there, is there something that, that you can break here on stage? Um, we'll be, you know, we're continuing to launch recommendations. Um, we have an Android app that will be coming soon as well. But for the rest of it, uh, check back at classbass.com and you'll find out. What <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. This is, uh, it's been lovely having you here. Great. Thank you.